have cut ourselves a work program. Just put the chair. The, the chair is there. Yeah. Just put the chair. August has been a busy month for President Harainde Jilema as he clocks one year in office. This week, the head of state has had a number of activities as part of his daily official duties. Among the activities was the special meeting with all the 116 local authorities in the country, which was held at the Mulungushi International Conference Center, Kenneth Kaunda Wing, in Lusaka. This week's edition of the Presidential Diary will also highlight President Hijilema's trip to the Democratic Republic of Congo during the 42nd Ordinary Summit of Sadiq Heads of State and Government. On Tuesday, August 16, the Mulungushi International Conference Center in Lusaka was the venue for the special meeting with all the 116 local authorities. The local authorities have been identified as nerve centers on government's operating table of development. Numerous matters aimed at revamping and improving the operations of the authorities across the country were discussed during the special meeting. In his keynote speech, the head of state explained some of the areas local authorities need to improve efficiency in a bid to unlock socio-economic development opportunities. Serving the people of Zambia is why we are seated here to do it, to agree how we do it better. Kwasila, even in Anguiai, they are peripheral, but serving the people of Zambia and serving them better every day, every week, every month, every year, then it becomes our way of life and that will not tolerate anything that negates the service, better service to the people, for the people. If a colleague in your council is not working towards this common purpose to unlock social economic development opportunities at your level, then you know they are pulling in the opposite direction and correct him. Land matters in the council have been one of the major concerns which President Hijilema highlighted. The president also called for sanity on matters concerning approval of land across the country. If I ask any one of you U.S. councils, how many of you can tell me that all the construction going on in your council, they are approved plans? We lost law and order in this country. We lost it. Correct that mistake. People are building over water lines, water sewer lines. People are building. Who gave them the authority to build over sewer lines? You are done. The late President Banda will say, Nibani Abu, Nibani. Where were you? On the roads in Mandevu, Minister, we have an issue in Mandevu, isn't it? Where people are building right on the road, right on the road, and if a pregnant mother has a bridge, child is a bridge, you want to evacuate her to a clinic, you can't drive the ambulance there. The mother and child dies. Who has killed that mother and child? The one who was built on the road, isn't it? But also the one who allowed them to build on the road. Our accomplices to murder. That's how we should work going forward. So please, let's deal with these issues. To avoid these issues, we must have proper planning. Under this government, we want to see proper planning, zoning. You are the ones, residential, commercial, and also provide services now. President Hijilema's desire is to see that taxpayers' money is channeled towards projects aimed at improving the council. He said spending tax on luxurious and lavishing vehicles for senior government officials under his leadership will not be priority. The mayor can still drive a nice car, but it doesn't have to be a VX. If you want to drive a VX, buy your own. <laughs> buy your own. 
Why do you want to pretend you know that you cannot afford a VX? Why do you want to pretend? Because you are using taxpayers' money. Now you should pretend. Hey. Uh, but a decent Hilux, double cab, aircon, it's a fantastic vehicle. Why you want a VX? Why you want a car costing $200,000? When that $200,000 you can put toilets in all the markets in that constituency. Town clerk wants a VX, mayor wants a VX, deputy mayor wants a VX. Whose money are you using? In that state house, I've not bought any new car. I refused. After the 16th of August last year, the system came to me and said, Mr. President, can you sign here? Before the 24th, I'm not sworn in. I said, sign every paper. I'm not yet sworn in here. Sign here. $1.8 million. That near Chandarama, at we, we ordered new vehicles. Your colleague ordered new vehicles. So now you sign because you need new vehicles. I said, why? $1.8 million for the president's vehicles? Are there no vehicles in status? They are there. Are they not moving? They are moving. Are there no wheels? They have wheels. I said, I will use those. <laughs> Cancel that tender. It's cancelled. I have not bought any new vehicle because I'm conscious this is not my money. Local government and rural development minister Gary Combo emphasized the need for prudent utilization of constituency development fund, CDF. You are all aware that upon the ushering of the United Party for National Development Party into government, courtesy of yourselves, we decided to increase the Constituents Development Fund by size and also by extent. And we agreed that the invocation of the usage of this money is going to be guided by the guidelines that we established by consultation throughout the various stakeholders, including yourselves as local authorities, the legislative wing of government, members of parliament, and we came up with a living document. Which living document, if it has a few challenges, we must continue together to improve it. The special meeting with all the 116 local authorities was held under the theme, working together to unlock socioeconomic development opportunities at local level. On Wednesday, August 17, President Hijilema left for the Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, to attend the 42nd SADC Summit in Kinshasa. Upon arrival at Indigili International Airport, President Hijilema was received by DRC Minister of Industry, Julian Paluku, Foreign Affairs Permanent Secretary, Isabella Lemba, Zambia's Ambassador to DRC, Paulu Kosita, and other senior government officials. The president later joined 15 Sadiq heads of state at the summit. In his maiden speech to the summit, President Hijilema called on Sadiq member states to ensure that the region remains food secure. We must therefore look into ourselves, our chairperson, before anywhere else to ensure that our people are secure. Secure in terms of food, secure in terms of other essentials. Uh, this is really our noble duty and together we are capable of achieving that level of security for our people. We have a unique opportunity to position our region as we have had our region, our continent, to be part of the production, processing, value addition of food in particular and indeed other sectors such as uh, electric vehicles, to be able to contribute, uh, to be a net contributor to the global food insecurity. And we have the agronomic conditions, appropriate agronomic conditions in our country. I think all we need to do is to work smart, to work together, and we should be able to achieve that. I am pleased to report some of the activities that have been implemented during the period under review to realize the aspiration of the theme. 
One, One. a detailed map in an analysis of selected agro-processing value chains which was undertaken to determine the actual performance in terms of identification of opportunities and constraints of the value chains. Specifically in the agricultural value chains, Tilapia value chains were promoted in the member states, especially Malawi, United Republic, Tanzania, Zambia, and Zimbabwe, which have already adopted the development of the tilapia value chain. Answering in numbers to the invitation that was sent to you at the occasion of the 42nd Ordinary Summit of uh, SADC Heads of State and uh, Government. Indeed, the organization of this uh, 42nd summit at uh, this uh, very difficult time is a testimony of our commitment to contribute to the emergency of our community. The head of state later returned in the country after the summit, which was held under the theme promoting industrialization through agro-processing mineral beneficiation and regional value chain for inclusive and resilient economic growth. August 18 marked the beginning of the 2022 National Census for Population and Housing. The first family of President Hagainde Ijilema and First Lady Mujinta Ijilema were among the first to be counted. After the confidential enumeration interview, which took about 40 minutes, President Ijilema raised concerns on the ethnic profiling of citizens appearing on the census questionnaire. The president said profiling citizens according to their ethnicity may be discriminatory. We've seen so much divisive behavior, so much behavior that uh, presupposes differences, advancing differences rather than commonalities. That sometimes are generated from the issue of ethnicity, if I may say, the deliberate and sometimes deliberate misunderstanding, misapplication, abuse of ethnicity for different reasons, sometimes for people to advantage themselves over others. So I think that's the only you know, gray, squeaky area for me that is important and needs to be dealt with properly, all the time focusing on the unity of a people a community, a country, at all times, which will lead to equitous treatment of citizens who have no, basically, responsibility for where they were born, from which parents, what language they spoke. I'm sure you're together here, and the citizens and the global community are listening to what I'm saying. As an African traveling around, I do understand that this ethnic issue is being abused for different reasons, politics being one. The president further gave a directive that the matter of profiling citizens according to their ethnicity be tabled before cabinet so that other mechanisms to collect data relating to citizens' ethnicity can be discussed and considered for use in similar future activities. Friday 19, President Ijilema started his official duties with a special radio program on Hot FM at State House. During the program, President Ijilema touched on various issues of governance, including economic restoration. Freedom. That was one of our campaign promises, that we will restore law and order. And we've done it. There will be lingering cases of old habits die hard, if we may say that. And some people think that they can continue doing what was happening before, um, but the law will take its course. So that's, that's, I think that's good. Uh, money needs to be available. That's a comment I had. Mm -hmm. That is true. But the, the issue is that uh, the money got taken away by two things. Before we took office, one, high debt. Most of the money was going to servicing the debt. What's the solution for us? What did we say when we were in opposition? We said that we will restructure the debt. And we're just doing that, exactly that. The Public Order Act has been one of the major issues, especially among political players. 
And the president stated that the review of the Public Order Act already started as he promised during campaigns. It's a people's domain. We know what is wrong in the constitution by and large. Zambians know through the various constitutional review commissions and also the lacunas that were identified. I'll give you an example that created a problem for us. The 2016 amendment to the constitution required that um, when there's a change of government, you cannot appoint a sol an attorney general, a solicitor general, until you get parliamentary approval. President Hagainde Ijilema later conferred with Salvation Army World Leader General Brian Pedro ahead of the church celebration of its 100 years existence in Zambia. During the closed door meeting, President Hijilema thanked the Salvation Army Church for its continued support to society, especially the most vulnerable. The president later swore in Zambia's ambassador to take William Skazwe, Matthews Jerry for Tanzania, and Derek Livune for Zimbabwe at State House. During the swearing in ceremony, President Hijilema urged the ambassadors and high commissioners assigned to foreign missions to ensure that they create warm bilateral relations with the respective countries where they are serving. We must always remember we are there to serve, not, be, not to be saved. Hmm? Being an ambassador in Takisa, I'll come to talk about that, is an important role. It's a rare opportunity to serve the people of Zambia and to go to Tanzania next door is very important and uh, Zimbabwe next door also very important. So I think once we get that right, that we are there to save the people, it does change or better the way we view work, that we are subservient to the people. Like I've said to many people, this state house is not mine. It is for the people. As an embassy, as an economic diplomat, three of you, now is not pure political diplomats. Your politics is important. Relationships are very important. Uh, warm relationships. But more, you are economic diplomats. To bring investment, not to go back to you, to bring investments here, joint venture. We have issues there, legacy issues. I don't want to return to, to talk. But we have legacy issues in, um, in Zambia and, and Zimbabwe. So as I said, I'm just singling a few issues in there. Common borders, people cross those borders. Sometimes some lose lives. We want to stabilize that situation. We are one family, Zambians and Zimbabwe. We are one people as Tanzanians. So please, High Commissioner, get your diary busy. Take the work away from the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Permanent Secretary, away from this state house, because you can carry that workload. And checklist the things that need to be done, priority. And then we resolve them. A photo session with the newly sworn in ambassadors concluded the president's official activities for this week. Remember to hit the like button, place a comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.